Washington Journal continues. And we are back with Congressman Tom McClintock at our table this morning, Republican of California. And Congressman, you support uh, the president's national emergency declaration. I Tell do. our viewers why. Well, the president has the uh, legal authority through the National Emergencies Act to declare uh, an emergency uh, and to reprogram unobligated military construction funds uh, uh, for whatever purposes are necessary to meet that emergency. Now, that uh, act was passed in 1976. It's been used 58 other times since then. There are 31 national emergencies currently in effect, including uh, to address uh, uh, civil unrest in Sierra Leone and Burma. Uh, I would think that the uh, collapse of our southern border is a higher priority than civil unrest in Burma. Uh, and so I think the president is on very sound legal ground. I was urging him to do this for months leading up to his decision, and uh, I fully support it. The House disagreed with his declaration. It looks like the Senate, there would be enough Republicans, and they I too... I was shocked, just shocked, that Nancy Pelosi's house was against <laughs> this. <laughs> right. But are you shocked that r your Republican colleagues in the Senate are also going to vote against the resolution? There are a few of them who have an issue with the law itself, that, it, uh, uh, that the law gives too much authority to the uh, president. Uh, that's a separate question. That's an entirely separate issue. Uh, uh, the central question is, uh, you know, is that law in place? It is. Uh, does the president have the responsibility to defend our borders? He does. Uh, and uh, uh, he would be remiss in, in discharging those responsibilities if he failed to use it. Republican Senator Rand Paul from Kentucky says this, though, that Congress clearly expressed its will not to spend more than $1.3 billion and to restrict how much of that money could go to barriers. Therefore, President Trump's emergency debt order is clearly in opposition to the will of Congress. Moreover, the broad principle of separation of powers in the Constitution delegates the power of the purse to Congress. This turns that principle on its head. The Congress appropriates funds, but it cannot spend them. The president spends funds, but cannot appropriate them. When the president spends funds, he must do so uh, under the conditions set by the Congress. Uh, uh, Paul is right to the extent that the Congress has appropriated uh, uh, over uh, uh, $1 billion for that purpose. Uh, where he is dead wrong is to ignore the fact that Congress also, many years ago, delegated to the president broad discretion uh, to uh, reprogram unobligated military construction funds to the defense of our country, which is exactly what the president is doing. I want to invite our viewers to join in the conversation as well. Democrats 202 748 8000, Republicans 202 748 8001, and Independents, your number is 202 748 8002. Congressman, then what do you think? If the Senate looks like they will uh, vote against the resolution, should the president veto it? Of and course then what he should. And then what, what do you think happens? Uh, I think it will come back to the Congress. The Congress will fail to override the veto, and the president will move on in discharging his responsibilities to secure our southern border. And what will he do uh, under that emergency declaration? Well, again, he could reprogram these funds to assure that we have a wall that will uh, uh, defend our country. Uh, from uh, a, a, a massive surge of illegal immigration. We're seeing that uh, now over the last few months, uh, and it promises to get worse from here. You're from California. The California uh, uh, governor, uh, Governor Newsom, and 15 other governors have sued the president over the emergency uh, declaration, calling it unlawful and unconstitutional. The governor of California says diverting money to build a wall would harm the state's efforts to fight drug trafficking. That's interesting, though. What they're saying is it's the law is unconstitutional. It's been used 58 times. They have never raised an objection to that law in the more than 40 years since it was passed and in the 58 times that previous presidents uh, have invoked it. Uh, why now? Uh, uh, I think part of the reason is it's because it's finally being used to actually defend our southern border, and that is a, an objective that a lot of these politicians don't share. What about the California governor's argument, though, that you're diverting money to pay for the wall when they need that money for fighting drugs? Well, first of all, the, the, the president also has authority outside of the National Emergencies Act uh, uh, to reprogram funds to uh, 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 four projects uh, that will allow us to better interdict drugs. And there's no better way to interdict the drugs that are coming across our border uh, than a border wall. 
Uh, yeah, well, we know that because uh, Israel constructed a 140-mile uh, wall to protect its southern border from illegal immigration coming up from Egypt, uh, and uh, it's about 97 percent effective. That then becomes a huge force multiplier for the um, uh, for uh, uh, our drug enforcement and our border patrol to actually concentrate their resources uh, to interdict uh, the drugs coming in through legal ports. We've got calls, so let's go to them. Eric in Seattle, Independent. Hi, Eric. Hi, hi, how you doing? Uh, first, uh, I'd uh, just like to say this, as you brought up Israel. Uh, Israel also uh, allows uh, abortion. But on to the question about uh, this declaration. Uh, you Republicans, when uh, uh, Democrats in office, uh, you are for debt and deficit. You agree talking, you say you're a constitutionalist. Well, let me ask you this about the Constitution. Uh, uh, you say it's a separation of powers you believe in, but under this circumstance, you don't. Also, those other terms, when uh, the uh, emergency declaration been declared, Congress agreed with it. This time, they don't agree with it. Okay, I also what you are saying is this. Would you agree if a Democratic president used this in office, how would you vote for gun control, for climate control, and say for uh, military for all? Because it is emergency. People are actually dying from what I just uh, uh, okay, let, let, let's yeah. take your question. Well, the, the, the answer to that question is if I agreed with their judgment, I would support it. If I disagreed with it, I would oppose it. Uh, uh, so uh, that is a separate question, though, from the constitutionality of the law itself. Should Congress have granted that much authority to the uh, president? Uh, uh, maybe not. I don't think I would have supported that bill if it had been uh, brought when I was uh, a member of Congress. Um, but the law is in place. Uh, to my knowledge, it has never been constitutionally challenged, even though it's been used 58 times in the past. Uh, the president has that legal authority, uh, and, and again, he has a clear, uh, re a fundamental responsibility to our Constitution, to our country, to defend our borders. A, a country that either cannot or will not defend its borders simply ceases to be a country, and history warns us. Uh, of, of many, many countries that have fallen uh, uh, because of, of that neglect of their borders. If House Democrats were to put a legislation on the floor that would take back his powers from this 1976 act, would you vote yes? As long as it included a provision that allowed him to move forward with the uh, current uh, uh, declaration. Because? Because it is absolutely essential to the defense of our country. We'll go to Maryland, Portland, Oregon.